This brings us to everybody's favorite part of the show, the flip in five, where we give Jeff five or we give Jeff a topic and he ranks it uh, one through five. This week's topic comes in from uh, an email, believe it or not. Uh, this comes from uh, from Carl. Carl. Yep. Friend of the show. Friend of the show. Carl. Drummer of metal bands. He yeah, uh, looks like he should be on Pete and Pete. He he Ooh. gave us four topics. <laughs> I, I understand that reference. <laughs> He What's gave up, us, Carl? He gave us four topics, and we're just going to go through topics. all of them. Four topics? I only yeah. hold, I yeah. only heard about one. Well, it's because I'm going to yeah. save some. Okay. This, gotta, this is going to stretch us out for a month. Yeah, okay. I mean, you gave the topics. I even crafted, lovingly crafted a list of my own. Nice. So. There we go. This is going to be great. So, this week's Slippin' Five is the top five hardest bosses you've ever faced. And I gave this yeah, to him man. ahead of time so that he could actually make it good. Even with... The uh, the head of time it was uh, it was a hard list to come up with because I don't finish games. Yeah, notoriously I, don't finish games till like three years ago. I but, also uh, had a very hard time with it just because I sat there trying to think of like what is a boss that made me want to throw a controller. Mm-hmm. And I've had thirty years of games where I'm just like, <laughs> yeah, there's total... like flash, and you're like, I don't remember any of these things. <laughs> yeah, I know. Like as soon as you said it, I'm just sitting there like, uh. uh what? And then I had to like Google up just like what are a hundred hard bosses, and then I went through and I'm like, which one of these did I? That's exactly you know? what I did, and that jogged my memory to get the actual list I have. Yeah. All right. Okay. Well, why don't you guys both take turns? You both have top fives. Why don't you uh, give us? Well, I'm going to give the honorable mention first, okay, honorable. and that is Mike Tyson, which is what ins- this question is what inspired me to go beat that fucking game. Yeah. Uh, I was like, yeah, he was really hard. Oh wait, you've never beaten him before. There you go. But my now, number. F- oh, go yep, ahead. Go ahead. I was gonna say I also had an honorable mention, but it. mine was actually the attempted slash cheated. <laughs> so I had uh, Hulex from Mario RPG because I never beat him. Mm-hmm. He was fucking awful though. Uh, Crawler Max from Borderlands. Tried him once and he just absolutely slaughtered me. It was like the optional like horrible boss at the mm-hmm. end. Uh, Moon Lord from Terraria. I don't know that one. <laughs> it's a very difficult boss because the amount of shit that goes on, but you basically have to build an arena specifically for fighting him. And hmm. because of that difficulty, uh, I don't know if we legitimately beat him. I think we like cheated up some items because you can dupe stuff really easy in that game. So we just made like a shitload of the ammo that homes in and everybody just ran for their lives was shooting behind them and kind of on here i wanted to put the uh, ruby and sapphire weapons from final fantasy 7 because oh good call depending on when you deal with them and how they're you deal with them fucking hard <laughs> yeah they're either going to just outright kill you or you're going to have so much godly materia and in, put into such a fashion that you can't lose. Mm-hmm. So it's not really a difficult fight as it's a win or lose situation. Sure. All right, number five, Jeff. <laughs> chapter seven of Valkyria Chronicles. <laughs> you're counting so, the whole chapter. I'm counting the, boss. the whole fucking chapter because up to this point, I love this Cheater. game. Uh, <laughs> I love this game. And then they introduce a mechanic they don't tell you how to do and how to use it properly where there's a tank that you can't destroy going barreling towards your base and you have to use your tank to shoot these sections of wall on it. And it can be beaten in four turns. And it is a brutal slog for me because I don't have the same configuration as all these goddamn YouTube videos. Mm -hmm. Uh, I made me hate this game. But I still love it. <laughs> but it's just a brutal, brutal level. Uh, Steve, number five. I attempted to stay away from situations, so I went with actual bosses. Look uh, at you actually following the shots rules. fired at my yeah. list. Yeah, no, he's, no, he's, no, he's 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 gunning for this to get renamed the Steve Five. <laughs> yeah, this one did get bent a little bit in that direction. It's the Delver or Progenitor from Final Fantasy XI's Pomavion dungeon mm-hmm. uh he's talking I, gibberish now he, he pronounced yeah. <laughs> all of that different than i would have so i know what he was talking about but he pronounced every single word in that sentence different than i would have i'm not saying wrong i'm just saying the different Delver? 
but uh yeah i remember when that came live uh i spent like just hours and hours getting a group of random assholes together fighting through the little dungeon and i don't even think the bosses were that hard but getting to the bosses mm -hmm. was a nightmare when you don't have enough people when you don't have enough friends sure. basically this is the old school i mean M mmo that. any mmo boss with a pug group is instantly the most challenging boss you've ever faced because they're now, they're they're very difficult nowadays more so but we're talking about the final fantasy 11 era where if you're even at like level 30 or above you have to have a level of coordination built in because yeah. you can't do anything in that game alone if you're a total dipshit you can only make it so far before you're never going to get another group in that game like everybody on the server is going to be like Fuck yeah there's only guy. like 12 of us on the whole server and be like that stupid dragoons he's an idiot don't invite him oh yeah like you'd walk into an area and immediately they're like hey this guy who's lfg Fuck him. He party wiped the whole like area six times last week. <laughs> mm -hmm. So uh, I I had to throw that in there. Number four, Jeff. Cuphead. All of it. <laughs> Fuck this beautiful game. Again? <laughs> I love playing Cuphead. It's the most infuriating game I've ever played. I, I got stuck on the, the, the chicken boss. Like the one that you're in an airplane. It's in oh, the second yeah, second yeah. of the it world. It gets so much worse than that. I'm sure it does. I got stuck on that for a long time, and uh, I don't know that I ever got any. I haven't gone that. back. I, yeah. I'm, it frustrated me to the point where I don't even want. Like, I you just you just reminded me Switch. that there still are games that are really fucking hard, and yeah. <laughs> Cuphead is one of them. <laughs> you, I see you it answered his dream. <laughs> I see it on sale for the Switch all the time, and that'd be a fun game to play. And then I'm like, no. No, it would not. I already feel self-conscious about how loud those buttons are. Yeah. I'm going to be playing that in the bus at 5.30 in the morning, just playing, fuck! <laughs> yeah, can't do it. Steve. Beautiful game. Fuck it. Uh, Patriarch from Killing Floor 1. Oh, good pick. End, end boss of every level, and he was a fucking dick because you had to kill him well, roughly three times. You had to go through damage phases, and he'd turn invisible and run away. And when you play on like the hard and real hard settings, mm -hmm. he just ended you because he would just appear and he only had like two attacks and one was a long range machine gun or a missile. And if you got caught with either of those, you are fucked instantly. What's your, and what's your gun of choice? I always played the demolitionist. So it was for me, it was all shotguns and grenades all the time. Nail gun uh, for life. <laughs> uh, who had the nail gun? Was that the pirate? Uh, I, I just bought it. Oh. Wait, did you play Killing Floor 1 or 2? I played both. Nail one, Gun is my gun of choice. 1 to me is still superior, but that's empty. I tried to go back and play it. but You need a group. Yeah, you do. But uh, no, I love that game. The Patriarch, definitely depending on your setting, like difficulty, he's just the most difficult motherfucker out there. You, you have to know what you're doing. You have to have coordination. Number three. Jeff. So for number three, I combine these two because they're so goddamn similar. And that is Tricky the Triceratops from Diddy Kong Racing and that fucking blue penguin from Super Mario 64 where you can't cheat on the race. Yeah. Uh, so yesterday I learned that there's a shortcut in the Tricky the Triceratops level that makes it way easier. I've beaten him like legit every time I've faced him. Well, since no you shortcuts. Oh, yeah. I, I do remember I this is one of the I never owned Diddy Kong Racing, but that was one Ooh. of those games that I went to Blockbuster and just kept getting over and over again. And I know I, you're, you're bringing back some some memories and the uh, the penguin race. It's tough as nails, but it's also difficult because you're fighting the camera the entire time. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I uh, there's fewer feelings that feel better than not having to play those stages again. Yeah, <laughs> Steve. I'm actually going to flip my second and third here now that I think about it. I'm going to do the Capra Demon from Dark Souls 1. It's, I think, like the first legit boss that you fight, and he's a total dickhead right off the bat. As soon as you walk in, you have to start rolling because immediately as you go through the door, he just does a downward slam that will end you, mm -hmm. like, just instantly, and then you have to trek all the way through to him. And... He has two dogs with him that just hound the shit out of you. And if they hit you and stun you, he'll just whack you and kill you all mm -hmm. over again. So 
Uh, I'm going to put him a little further down the list because you kind of do have to cheese him a bit. You have to like get on this little ledge just to bait the dogs to you where he can't hit you. And so you can take care of the dogs and then deal with him. But you have to do that over and over again until you get down what you need to do and do it correctly. And that was the first Dark Souls boss that I beat that I was like, I felt really accomplished after. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I, I originally put it at two, but I actually think the other one I felt better about and Num was more difficult. Number two, Jeff. Number two, mine cart carnage. <sighs> I hate playing this level. I'm real good at that level. I've once in my life beaten it on the first try. Yeah. But it is frustrating, infuriating, and uh, I don't like playing it. Yeah. The also, there's time? a cheat in this level, too, right at the beginning. That it's a level from through. Donkey Kong Country 1. Ah, uh, okay, okay. Yeah, give me the game, because yeah. I'm just like, what the? I thought you said uh, Minecraft. You're naming, like, Dementors <laughs> like, and shit from Dark Souls, and I gotta give you Donkey Kong Country. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 That's another one of those, like, if I had to play a game blindfolded, the first couple levels of Mike Tyson's Punch Out are definitely in in muscle memory, but there are a, like the the auto scrolling minecart slash the skull levels from um, uh, Donkey Kong Country Two. I've got them; they're all in there. I beat the you're you're about to hit your first cart level. Um, once you get out of that uh, jungle, once I get out of the yeah. yeah yay. But yeah, no, I love it, Steve. Uh, I'm gonna butcher these names, but it's. Orenstein and Smaug from Dark Souls 1 and it's a paired boss bosses that you have to fight in this like chapel and one's a skinny dude with a lance and the other guy's this fat fucker with a hammer and just dodging two bosses at once I, I'm not a, I've never been a big fan of ads and multiple like trying to, to, to maintain spacing on two different things and concentrate on two different things at the same time I, yeah, I've never these, Never been a fan it's, of that mechanic. It's just two bosses at once. And yeah. the thing is, depending on... Well, it doesn't matter. If you kill one, the other one goes into super mode. Mm -hmm. And so you have to kill the fat fucker. Because if you let him go into super mode, he'll just destroy you. It makes things so much harder. So you got to take him out first. Because the other guy has like more predictable attacks. <laughs> but the uh, the places that you would use for refuge slowly get destroyed too because there's a couple like pillars you can hide behind but they'll just wreck them so mm -hmm. you slowly run out of space to like get away and recover because in that game you have the estus flasks but you legitimately are like all right hold on pop drink watch my health go bar go up and it takes that much fucking time mm -hmm. meanwhile if you you can't move you can't do anything and if you get your ass kicked it stops mm -hmm. you don't get your health and you get fucked over so uh that was definitely the one that was more difficult than the capra demon and i felt probably even more accomplished when i actually did it i think i actually threw my remote once or twice and it took me two or three days to do it because i would do a couple attempts and be like fuck this fuck you forever suck a dick put it down and next day i'd be like all right maybe i overreacted get nailed be like you fucking asshole <laughs> no nope. turns out i was wrong it's way worse than i thought before i yeah. threw i threw a controller for the first time in probably three years uh yesterday <laughs> it's the end boss of the level that you're in right now because i it's, i know what i need to do it's not like i don't know what i need to do but i just kept fucking it up and it's one of those it's where you get impatient and then you start losing earlier in the fight because you just want to get to the hard part faster yep yeah. It's, yeah. I threw the controller for the first time. That That is another plug I want to give to Dark Souls is that it's not unfair. Yeah. Every death that happens... Man, it's your you fault. Something, yeah, you did something. Yeah. And you should, you should learn from it. And so it's even worse when you make a dumb mistake. You're like, I'm just out of positioning and I just got fucked over for it and I have to redo the whole thing and you feel like shit. But when you finally fucking kill them, you're like... I feel so good. <laughs> like that's what I, feel that's like what I, I just what I don't like about Dark Souls is I do tedious data entry at work. I don't want to do tedious data entry in games too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's probably why. But I I've, my main takeaway so is Steve likes Dark Souls. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's not bad. Number one. Oh what a what a what a great booming voice on that one. I only had to come one. in here and go with a number one. Yeah. Uh, Sephiroth, Final Fantasy VII, the last battle. Uh, story time. 
when I was younger, I picked up the PC version over the summer, right before school started. And I used to stay up till like two or three in the morning playing Final Fantasy VII. And I made it to the end of the game, the last fight with one save file where I was under leveled for the battle and did not have enough healing items. So I had two options. I could fuck this game forever or I could start over from the beginning. <laughs> and it took me until last year to go back and beat Final Fantasy seven. Yeah, that's uh, old school video games like that. That was my I think it was Fallout two where I just I got past a checkpoint and didn't have a previous save and I just was not geared properly, but I couldn't go back to get out of that final yep. boss room. And uh, yeah. What an awful, what an awful feeling. I still have dread when I play that open worldy make decisions, inventory management style of video game that I'm making some kind of decision that's going to prevent me from beating the game. It was that and Resident Evil 2, where I just didn't have good ammo management and just like, I don't have any fucking bullets. I can't beat this game like this. Um, let me ask you, when you play a game where choice impacts the narrative, do you look up what your decision will no. change before you do it? No, no, no. no. I also, I also don't. I, no, I also don't save either. Like I, I just, I, I just, and I probably would feel better about making these decisions if I did that. But now I just go in head first. I'm like, no, nope, making these decisions. Interesting. Yeah, I, I'm gonna channel Ryan here and talk about Final Fantasy VIII because I think he got to the end of that game where he max leveled everybody. But one of the bosses does a like death level three, and since he was ninety nine, it would just wipe out his whole party. Mm -hmm. And so he thought he couldn't do it and gave up and got real pissed. And it wasn't until like two years afterwards that he told me that story. And I was like, you know, in that game, there's a thing called the safety bit, which just prevents instant death. You could have just equipped that. And he was like, so no, no, it was impossible. <laughs> <He> just... <laughs> yeah, after he put his jaw back into place, he told you to go fuck yourself. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, yeah. Is that was that your number one? What's your number one, Steve? My number one, and this is particularly because of the way I did it, but uh, who from Dark Souls? Who we got? Uh, Lavos from Chrono Trigger, mm -hmm. solo Ooh. with only Chrono. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah, I did not know at the time that you had after you beat the game, you can do a new game plus, and there are specific points in the game that you can take a portal and just go fight Lavos and each time you do it you get a different ending mm -hmm. and so there's like 12 different endings in the game but uh, the very first one is like right off the bat you start your character you go to the town fair and there's this little twinkly spot you go into it and fight Lavos I did not know at the time that you could actually recruit the first two characters and then go through it. Mm -hmm. So I was like, I want to get the best ending. I'm just going to do it. So I walked through with just the one guy and <laughs> I fucking ruined myself on that. It took, didn't actually take me that many attempts, but it was a hyper grind because I'm one of those people that I can't prevent myself from not using my items, like the mega elixirs, things like that. Like I just, I'll never use them. Mm -hmm. And I had so many stocked up that every time I was about to wipe, I could just pop an elixir because I had like 70 of them by that time. And I just kept myself alive using the hardcore endgame items <laughs> on just the one guy. Mm -hmm. I'm sitting there popping mega elixirs, which are for your whole party, just, yeah, <laughs> just, just for to him. Just bring yourself back up. Just casting Luminar over and over again. I know the exact frames of that entire animation burned into my brain from casting it over and over and over again until I beat that thing. I felt amazing. And then it wasn't until a couple of years later they were like, oh, make sure when you do that you recruit the first two characters. And I was like, the fuck? <laughs> I, did it. I did it so hard for no reason, but I did it. You did it. And that makes you better than everybody. Of course, well, yeah. certainly better than me. That's a that's a fantastic <laughs> list. Most of mine, because I sat down and thought about it, like I, I, it's hard. I had a lot more. I had a lot more challenging moments in video games with specific levels, like Jeff. A lot of Jeff's list was not actually bosses, but just experiences in a video they game. Bosses like, to me, dude. Like I distinctly remember having a hell of a time trying to beat Donkey Kong, the yeah, Donkey Kong arcade cabinet in Donkey Kong sixty four to get the coin out of that with that fucking controller the 64 controller just could not fucking do it um and it's not designed to be your friend no and then most of my actual bosses when i really thought about it were final fantasy 11 and final fantasy 14 related 
because that's those yeah. are the games where I did the most raiding. So like Final Fantasy XI, uh, probably like Kieran. The first time we did Kieran took us like seven hours, and we had you know five different parties, like full alliances, ready to wipe in because we just kept wiping. And it was a it was a really cool experience, and you know, way easier to do now that I know how to do it. But it was a you know, it was awesome to take down. And then like Final Fantasy XI was the um, oh that like the 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 snakes, the two snakes that when you would uh, you had to kite one, and, and it wasn't it wasn't that hard once you learned how to do it. But that first time beating down was Twin Tanya. I think that was what her name was. Um, was a lot of fun. But uh, again, thank you to Carl for the suggestion. If you have thank any, you Carl, if you have ooh, suggestions. Ooh, one last one. Go for it. Because I had I had a final LOL one. Okay. And I thought you were gonna say it because you started talking about Final Fantasy XI. Uh, I heard legends of this piece of <laughs> shit, but absolute virtue. Oh yeah. Final Fantasy XI. They fucked the game. That's a great. <laughs> what a great, <laughs> so great story. I'm, I'm gonna tell Jeff about this go because for it. it's. So as far as hard bosses go, this was a raid boss from Final Fantasy XI that they introduced, and it, it went undefeated for three years after launch <laughs> because they uh, didn't tell people how to beat it and they didn't give it any sort of like uh, weaknesses or anything like that. And uh, every time people found any sort of exploit or anything that would have helped them, they would immediately kick out the entire raid group and ban doing that. So every time people like figured out how to like cheese how to it, they're just like, in. nope. And they just kick them all out and reset it. And um, what was it? There was a legendary battle where this raid group spent 30 hours consecutively fighting this thing and people were like passing out at their seats and just they never did it. So they finally nerfed down the boss after three years and the level cap of all the characters got raised because of an expansion and it was finally defeatable. But for fucking three years not be able to beat a raid boss yeah. like people got pissed off people got pissed off when the uh, destiny 2 puzzle was too hard and they couldn't beat it in like the first 10 minutes that it was open like it's there there was that this was definitely a different time in the yeah. internet where we I paid mean, even, 11 dollars a month for this bullshit but yeah, granted even, it, it took like there were so few people that could even see that because it took hundreds if not thousands of hours to even get to that point well, i feel like it was more acceptable yeah, WoW bosses and raid bosses get done within, like, the first two, three weeks. Yeah. Just because you have to, like, get to that point. But, uh, no, that was, from nowadays' perspective, having a boss that you can't beat for three years is inconceivable. Mm -hmm. Like, that shit should have been solved by day two because somebody <laughs> data mined the exact HP and the rhythm of it and how many like characters you needed and what classes and what order to cast your spells like that shit would have been solved within two weeks again thank you carl for the suggestion we have three Thanks, more from carl. carl but if anybody has any suggestions you can email me dan at game night now.com or jeff jeff at game night now.com steve check won't check my email steve won't no. check his email he has an Don't email too it's steve at game night now but he won't check it and uh, uh, if you have any suggestions for video game who am i you can also email those uh to us as well this week's steve run at it two minutes are on the clock Steve, you ready? Uh, let me make sure I have my data because there's dates that I need to know. <laughs> Jeff and I will be playing. If you credit, don't, yeah. if you don't know how we play this, instead of doing twenty questions, uh, which we feel is too slow, we put two minutes on the clock and rapid fire questions at the person until we figure out who the video game character and it's we're trying never to guess tails. Is. And it's never tails, but we always try it. We always try. Right, it. I I want to have one caveat before we start. I'm going by the game that this character was in and named after, not appearances beforehand. So he's giving us a little hint that he appeared in a video game before his video game that he appeared in. <laughs> so he cameo. Uh, hang on, hang on. I'll, I'll wait yeah, for the yeah. clock. There were cameos before an actual game, and I'm not counting.